From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Vitamin Energy. The Vitamins. The Energy. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! It's Wake Up War Champ presented by Vitamin Energy. Coming up on today's show, a little sparring session. Your guy and Corey, or rather, your guy and Aslan, debating about how improbable or probable it will be that Mike Norvell gets this thing flipped. Programs out here offering $5 million over numerous years to high school quarterbacks. What's the market going to be to keep Luke or Brock if they ball out in the last four games? And some practice observations and a look ahead at the future schedule. Wake Up War Champ presented by Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com. War Champ BOGO, the promo code. Use it. Profit in life. Enhance the focus. Enhance the mood. Enhance the workouts. Enhance the burn. Get the fat off you. Get some of it off you if you want, maybe. Or, or, just, or just be plump. It's fine. Do what you want. Live your life. But it'll be a little bit better with some vitamin energy in it. Go to vitaminenergy.com. Promo code again, War Champ BOGO. Buy one, get one free. Clinically proven. 260 milligrams, all natural caffeine, no hocus pocus in this stuff, no secret potions, just the stuff that works, caffeine, and no sugar, so no sugar crash, vitamins and nutrients, can't go wrong, vitaminergy.com, workchant.com, ultimate level sports source, FSU1, promo code, two months, one dollar, y'all are hurt, I get it, you don't like us, we told you they're going to be awesome, they're not an awesome team, you're punishing us, whatever, I get it, it's fine, but hey, just in case you want to come back, two months, one dollar. I shouldn't say come back, or this is for first time subscribers. So if if you if you were a fan earlier, but then you sold out and left us, and now you want it back on the bus, I think you might have to pay full freight. But thanks for being here, everybody. We certainly appreciate it. How are you, Corey? I'm good. And also, I would tell people uh, it's going to be a really exciting, um, super fast paced month of December. A lot of changes. I'm thinking you got to get half a roster. Um, signing day is like the Wednesday after the Florida game. So, uh, and then the portal opens up. So yeah, it's going to be a really interesting, fast paced, supersonic off season starting in December. So, uh, yeah, join up. If there was going to be a soundtrack for all of the upheaval and the changes that are going to be floating in the atmosphere, Corey, what, what would that song be for you? Do you think? Oh, well, you couldn't ask me this and given me like five minutes to think about it. I uh, yeah, I don't know, buddy. Uh, the Jeopardy theme? Oh, the winds of change. Yeah, that's right. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's an old school. Uh, we used to have Shout these things back in the Shout day. Shout out to Ira and then him send the alley and then you coming down with the oop yeah. on headlines. It, it, uh, we used to have these things back in the day, folks, if you're a little too young to know, they were called power ballads. Mm. And they were by your favorite hard rock acts. Although they weren't really hard rock, they just wore makeup and had long hair, but they called themselves hard rock. And on every album, which always inevitably ended up being their only hit on the album, were these slow-ass songs like Winds of Change by Scorpions or uh, Cinderella, Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone. Mm. Poison had uh, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. They're not great songs, probably. Uh, I haven't listened to them in a while. But What, they was, were, Warren's? Uh, what was Warren's power ballad? I don't know that they had cherry pie, but that wasn't a pie. I'm sure they had one. It must not have uh, broken through. No, they um, did. I'm going to look it up right now, man. It's a great one, too. Warren um, had a power ballad? Heaven. Right. Heaven. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Heaven is a Got a picture of your house. Oh, and you're standing by the door. Well, you, why'd you even ask me? You know the words Well, I just Googled it, and I see the oh. lyrics, and I know how it goes. It was black and white and faded. It's looking pretty worn. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. All right. Um, I just want to tell you the headlines is great on Tuesday, Corey, as always, as I get it. I get it. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. I'm just glad you're listening again. I'm glad you're a loyal listener. That means a lot. You know, I, I'm sorry to say this, but when they're not good, the show is exponentially better. I mean, when they're good, it's like, yeah, Well, you good. mean when the football team Correct. is not good. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's just uh, either, I don't know, I, I should I should kind of take that back because I fell in love with the program during 13. Um, but on like 14, I just, you know, I, I think I might have been able to kind of you know, put my brain on neutral during 13 and just kind of enjoy the uh, the familiar voices and maybe not so much the content. But then in 14, when you're hanging on by a thread every week and you're like wondering what's going on, when are they going to turn the switch? You know, it was I, I was dialed in for every word and syllable that you guys would say. But I'm sure last year was really fun to listen to all the 
you know, oh yeah, we'll hang a 40 this week, 40 burgers, all that kind of fun stuff. But, uh, when there's so much uncertainty, you know, we, we come to you folks in these trying times, but man, I, I was listening to it. Like, I don't know, like Marty Jannetty, like reaching my hand out over that rope, like Sean Michaels, come on, man, give me tag. You need, you need some help. Let me get in there. Um, I, I was team Jeff on Tuesday, man. I think you straddled the fence. So Ira didn't feel overwhelmed. But if you guys have some time, go back and watch. Watch. Listen to it on 93.3. The, the audio quality is supremely better. Mm. But watch. Just watch the first segment. And just Ira. Just poor Ira. Like, man, I, I, this is what we're doing today. This is yeah. what I'm walking into today. We're going to do yeah. this today. Uh, but I thought he had a kind of a good point about, you know, I, I disagree with him about. I think people come to listen to, to a lot of these shows, whether it's our show, Cameron, Headlines. But they, they want to get an idea of what's about to happen. What, you know, even like long, not even short term, but long term. And Ira's not trying to play that game. And I get it. Like, you know, he get, he's, he, listen, there's going to be a bunch of changes going on here. Probably as, as soon as that f- team walks off the field against Florida, hopefully it's a win uh, in that last Saturday in November. Uh, and Ira's like, listen, man, will it, is it all going to work out? We'll find out, you know, we'll find out, but we don't know for sure. So he doesn't want to kind of uh, get involved in the, uh, the prognostication long term. Uh, but I don't know. I just the more that Jeff says some of these things, and I, and I, I think he believes it. I don't think he's playing radio, but I, I don't think he's nearly as you could say what morose as he was on Monday, uh, uh, on Tuesday. But I just Corey, there. I know we, we that coaching changes are a, a virtual certainty. Mm. But you know, if if Miami had Florida State's coaching staff and the staffs were flipped in reverse, what's the score of that game on Saturday? Then they need dudes. I mean, they need dudes, like really good dudes, not just another guy. They don't need Jags. They need dudes. And there's such a small runway to get off the, the air, off the ground and get into the air this uh, calendar. And I, I just think about the Jared verses, man. Like, they're not only are they, have they identify and find a Jared verse, they're going to have to hold them off from LSU and Texas again. But now this time, Texas and LSU can't just be like, uh, yeah, we're – we're in the NIL game. We're, we're interested in you. We'll, we can put a package together. Because at that time, Florida State's like, here's what we can offer. This is how we roll. This is what we do. Florida State was so far ahead of everybody when it came to a collective and putting together proposals to players. Now everybody's on that same plane. So now you got to elbow in there and, and try to get that guy to come to your institution. Then he comes here, and he's got to buy in to the degree that a guy like Jared Verse did. Because Verse bought in heart, mind, body, and soul into what Mike Norvell was selling uh, and listen, I mean, it, it was not the greatest of times in 2022 coming into Florida State. I mean, 21, there was some signs of life, but nothing guaranteed that 10 wins was on the horizon and a possible national title two years later. So you, you've got to be able to get a guy that's special and talented that way, hold him off from all these other SEC teams that have probably more money than you. And he's got to be totally bought in emotionally, mentally. And then after you get him here, you got to go and get about eight more of those guys too. And it, it, it just feels so daunting and I agree with Jeff's sort of sentiment that Miami has at least put together some high school classes over the last two years with Mario and is on the way to probably putting together another good one this year that they can they can supplement, they can get some finishing touches. Are they, are they going to get another great quarterback that's going to fit into the air raid system? I don't know, but not using Miami as a barometer, but just, there's teams out there that have been recruiting well in the high school level that they're not going to, I guess maybe that opens the door for Florida State, that they won't need to be as desperate in the portal as Florida State is. It just feels like there's so many things that have to go right for Florida State, Corey. It's it's improbable. So right uh, to do what? Like so many things have to go right to do what? To to be a playoff team. And I, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not with you on being like, let's just get back to 8-4 and four and then get, get our I mean, breath in 25 what, what, and get back to 26. Okay, well then don't live in reality. We can all ride unicorns and, and live on rainbows. Like, but you, you talk cannot... about BYU going from 3-9 and nine and now they're 8-0 and, oh and and Iowa State going from 3-9 and nine to 8-0. and oh. We got to get back to that, man. If, if those teams are doing that, Florida State should be able but to what, do that. So I guess I'm asking, like, so what is the alternative? Fire Mike Norvell and then what? Oh, no, 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 no. But, no, but I'm just saying in terms of like people bristling at any other notion of just like, just be patient and we'll see what happens. Like, I don't I, think it's a be patient thing. I think it's more like you have no choice. Like what, clearly, what do you, clearly. What, what, so it's not saying stress patience. It's all going to work out. It's saying there's no other, there's no other recourse. He is going to fire some coaches. He's got to bring in a lot more talent on this football team. He's got to bring out more talent on the offensive side of the ball, obviously. And then let's see what it looks like. Like to say that there's no chance that it gets better is just uh, false. 
because there is a chance, and it's not improbable. If it can happen all over the country, by God, it could happen to Florida State. It happened with this guy. We've already seen it. Now, okay, sure. Now, Jared Burch, you might not be able to wrestle him away from Ohio State now. But again, I think that's an assumption. Florida State, th- this is the problem I have, is the poor mouthing of Florida State as if it's still not a blue blood. It's still not one of the, I don't know, man, 12 best programs of all time. It's not. It just went 13-0. and Just, like, literally just went 13-0. and it's proven it can win in every decade. It's proven it can win huge. It's proven it can win national championships. There aren't that many programs out there like this. But all this poor mouthing as if we're, we're covering Vanderbilt and there's no hope ever, ever, is just absurd to me. It's Florida State, and you have a head coach that's done it. So it, it, this is a marriage that can work. Now, it could be irreparably fractured by this debacle. But it's not so much to think that players around this country might want to play in Tallahassee. But they haven't. Like, no high school player. I mean, how many elite high school players have they gotten the last three years? And they've had a good product to sell. So do you think that, like, if they bring in a whole new recruiting support staff and get better recruiters and better coaches that can recruit better than your current staff, that maybe that could flip it? I don't know. I think the head coaches, that's so much of your recruiting, man. I, I, I know money is. I know some, there's some right. semblance of relationship when it comes to an assistant coach. But it's like, do you believe in that guy? Do you like his energy? Are you totally bought into his messaging? And I, I get it, man. At least I'm not trying to pour him out Florida State, but also the guy that's responsible for getting it to 13-1 and one is the guy that's responsible for hey, having hey, knocking not, on the door. Hey, this show, this show does not add that one. We do not recognize I do. that one. I, as I'm long. sorry. I'm sorry. They, Come they, on. Come on, that was not the they 2023 won 13, Florida they, State football team. They won 13 games last year. All right, I, I won't. I won't say that they lost. That was, but that just was not his team. That what showed up in Miami was not even a football team, and that was not even a football game. So, well, Kirby's team on. showed up, and they were well, mad. Hey, Kirby's they got, got a better. Left out. They Kirby's got, left got a better out program. Playoff. I know. He, they had a chance though, didn't they? They lost the game. They had a chance. They decided their own fate. Florida State never got to. But we're not going to relitigate the past. Right. right, right. Um, but no, I just I don't. I, and it's not really a pushback to you. It's just the thought. Well, it is, but it's a pushback to the sentiment that it's just too big a hill. It's too steep a hill to climb. I, I, I just think that's crazy. I mean, things have turned around all over the country. Does that mean it's a? It's absolutely going to happen? No. But, and I promise you, folks, if we're sitting here next October and this program is two and seven, I am not going to be sitting here saying, "Hey, don't forget Iowa State and BYU." I, I'm not. But this is a this is a one year. Awful season. I don't think because of the way college football is, I don't think that guarantees it's awful next year. Clearly, they are not going to build from the high school ranks. That is off the table. His high school recruiting class has fallen apart, which has everything to do with the product he's put on the field. Go win eight or nine games next year. All of a sudden, you're rec- you're not recruiting. No, you're it. not you, though, because they I mean, did come that on, last man. What year. It, they were thir- they won thirteen games last year. And they still didn't have a top ten class. But okay, but they had a respectable class. You, not everybody gets to be George and Ohio State, man. But you just talked about Florida State's one of the twelve best programs of all time. They are. They right now in the current uh, construct of college football, they are not on the same level as George and Ohio State. Get there and stay there, and let's see. Also. Get a place where you're getting the kind of money that Georgia and Ohio State get. You're not on a level playing field, but you're certainly on a level playing field with the rest of the ACC, and I think that's where maybe some of the disconnect is, is that everybody right now, you everybody wants to look at Alabama, Georgia. You brought up LSU. Yeah, man, you don't have the money that those, those programs do. You're not on a level playing field with them right now. Hopefully by the end of the decade you will be, but you're certainly on a level playing field. It's tilted in your favor in this stupid conference. Yeah. So don't tell me you can't win this conference. No, and if you I, I win this conference, be. Aslan, then what happens? You go to the playoff, baby. Right. So that's not that hard. Po- that's not out of the realm of possibility. SMU and Pitt are challenging to get to the playoff this year. SMU and Pitt. So you can do it. Now, when you get to the playoff, are you going to be able to win four games in a row? Probably not. Not if you if you keep getting the 36th, if you, if you stack up top 40 recruiting classes, you probably don't have the kind of depth that can get you through three or four rounds of the playoffs, but you can get to the playoff, get to the playoff a couple times, all of a sudden you're more attractive to high school recruits, and then all of a sudden you are landing top 10 classes or top 12 classes, and then you can get in there. Um, I, I don't, I just, the dire situation in that it's just, irre, it's irreparable, 
the harm has been irreparable. I just don't I don't see it. You are going to have a bad high school recruiting class, just like you would if you fired Norvell and brought in somebody the day after the Florida game. It's going to be it's been, it's blown up, yeah. and that is all on him, and that is not good. But as we've discussed on this show, thankfully, and he really thanks everyone, uh, college football is not what it was five and six years ago. There is a, there is another avenue to load your roster. It's not maybe ideal in the long term, but it, ha- it it's certainly the route he has to take, and hopefully oh, he does better. Yeah, l- listen, I'm not advocating to fire him. I just I I just believe I think maybe I'm a little bit closer to, to Jeff that like it's it's hard to think that it's going to work out to where you thought this program was going to be like eight months ago or whatever. You know, I just, that's my concern. Because listen, I, I get it. You know, when you're, when you've found this bottom hell that we find ourselves in this abyss going eight and four right now, next year sounds great. But again, how many of the guys that you're going to bring in, will they be multi-year transfers? Right. Yeah. Will they be guys that can stick around in 26 that you can then plug in some other holes? I just don't, Again, that just feels like you're ha- a lot of things, a lot of dominoes have to kind of go your way. But then again, maybe that's what 2023 was. And if, if you just give this guy a three-year window, maybe every third year he can create something like he did in 2023. But just, I mean, but every third year can't be this, right? right. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. The, the 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 fluctuation is what I think is so frustrating, right? Like the 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 great season followed by a disaster. Yeah. Uh, that that is not that should never be on the bingo card. That should never be even an option. Um, and it can't happen again, or he will be gone. And if he does, and Jeff made a good point, or maybe it was Ira, if he does go 11 and one next year somehow, maybe lay off the extension. <laughs> He's set. He's set. He, you don't have to do anything. He's set. Let's play this contract out for a while. But um, yeah, I just think that next year's roster. You know, look, man, again, I know he's not he's persona non grata around here. We don't like talking about him, and he's a unique circumstance because of his sons, certainly the quarterback is in the, the kid that he stole from Florida State, who's like a son, are the two best players on the team, and the, the Travis Hunter is the best player in the country. But Colorado was awful last year on the line of scrimmage. They were awful, yeah. both lines of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Well, now when you watch a Colorado football game, not only are they, they've gone from 4-8 and eight to 6-2, and two, again, they might have the first quarterback taken in the draft and the first overall player taken in the draft, but it's, it's not a two-man team. Like, that defense is much improved. Hmm. And Dion didn't visit a single high school recruit during the offseason, literally. He boasted that he was not in a single living room for the high school season, didn't go on one official visit hmm. to a high school coach. And look what they've done. Now, he's about to bounce, I assume, after his kid leaves, and we'll see what that looks like. But I'm not just saying this because they're 6-2. and two. I'm saying it when you watch Colorado play this year, especially on the defensive side of the ball, it is not a joke like it was last year. They don't get just pushed all over the field. They have they they play physical. That's a real defense um, with so plenty of new faces. Um, just the point being, it's out there. And I know you don't have Dion. You don't have the power of personality with Norvell that Dion has. But you, it's Florida State. You're you're gonna be able if you do it the right way. There are avenues to replenish this roster with you know big time football players. It's not. It doesn't have to be a two-star graveyard. That, that you can go get guys that maybe were two stars coming out of high school, but now are legitimate players. Uh, so I just I think there's more hope than we're letting on. It, it it does seem daunting because you're losing an entire recruiting class. But let me ask you this, Aslan, and I'm just talking about solely about 2025 because again, as we move forward, man, it would be nice to have some guys that got better in this program for two, three, four years. How many of the guys in the 2025 recruiting class, just going on Mike Norvell's history at Florida State, were going to help you win games in 2025? Any? Right. right. You know? So that's well, 2025. Thomas, is the, I don't know if Solomon Thomas is a guy that can play day one, but yeah, right now that you're hanging on by thread. I get it. Yeah. That, so, so yeah, you're in, it, you know, you might, have, you, you might have 11 guys in your recruiting class. It's going to be an all-time bad high school recruiting class. None of those guys were going to help you win in 2025 probably not anyway and then because not that they're not good enough or they're not guys out there that are good enough no freshman ever contribute here I know, but so, that's wild though like you hear yourself like he's been here for five years yeah, yeah, you, yeah. we've come to expect nothing out of a true yeah, freshman no and I'm, and I'm not saying that's a good thing that's certainly not a feather in the cap I'm just mm-hmm. saying that that class falling apart doesn't portend to wasn't 2025 the, being yeah. a disaster. Wasn't either. the cure? Was that yes. wasn't the Calvary? That, that's the better way to say it. It was yeah. not going to be the cure, no matter what. This is not basketball, where you get a Jonathan Isaac and all of a sudden you're one of the top 15 teams in the country. You get a couple of great players, awesome. They are not going to be 
likely huge difference makers um, on a football field, on a, on a football team. So, I, you, look, it's – I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised, man. What do you think, 30 new guys? 40? Who? You know, I uh, you got to retain some guys. Um, so some of the young guys, I think you like um, the quarterbacks. You got to figure that out. There is there, there. It is not a guarantee, folks. I promise you, it is not a guarantee that uh, Mike Norvell turns this thing around and you even have a winning season next year. I would be surprised because I believe in the dude. I would be surprised um, that it's a disaster again. But as I mean, as would I, as would I. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't be stunned if it's somewhere between five and eight. Nope. I mean, five wins and eight wins, um, or six and not somewhere like that, right? I mean, they I think they have a pretty. I mean, I'm saying this in October of 2024. It looks like a pretty manageable schedule next year, other than you know you you somehow want to play Alabama. Well, you got to go to Death Valley. That's not going to be fun. No, you well, yeah, I mean, there are losses as long. We know they're going to be losses, but you yeah. got. You know, right. some of those road games are certainly winnable. Uh, you got Wake and Stanford back on the schedule. Woo. You got two automatic wins with Texas A&M Commerce and Kent State. So you feel like you're you're starting the season with at least four or five wins. Uh, but that's that's a big assumption because Lord knows we didn't know what was coming this year. But I think you get back to respectability. That buys you an extra year of not having to pay fifty three million dollars to buy him out I'm with and you. see what he can build on. And, you know, the the biggest thing that is going to happen to this program, in my opinion, over the next five or six years is not who the head coach is. It's what conference you're in. Yeah. Um, so y- you don't want to have to take – if you can avoid it in another 2-10, and 3-9 and nine season, I don't think it's avoidable. But if you can get back to respectability, again, I know the standards here are higher than that. But just get to where you're not a joke, you're not a punchline. Get to what Miami's been – just get to what Miami's been for the last 20 years. Just get there. Somewhere in the neighborhood of six and eight, nine wins. Um, maybe get ranked at some point in the season and then lose immediately. Like, do that, whatever it takes. If you can do that for a year and then get some footing under you so you prove, okay, 2024 was just a one-off. Next year, you build on that. Maybe the quarterback you, you use or bring in is young, and you can build on that. And You go into 2026 with some, some firepower, and you, you get to nine or ten wins or get to the playoff or whatever. All that is just delaying having to pay – Fifty million dollars for somebody not to coach when you might have to pay an exit fee to get out of the ACC, and you're building all this stuff around the campus, and you got to pay players. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I just for everybody's benefit, he, let we all have to hope and pray that he he figures this out. But it's not, it's not, it will not take a miracle, right? Because that implies it took a miracle in 2021. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't. It, it won't take a miracle to be back to pretty good. To get back to great, yeah, might take more than we like, but anything is better than this. Am I right, A-Train? Yeah, I guess but, Yeah, I guess maybe the crux of our disagreement is that, you know, like, will in this crazy environment that we're in now, like, is everything going to be up on its head to where, like, success now becomes linear again to where it's you, you do go from, you know, this season to eight wins, so then you're back into the playoff, whereas, you know, I, I don't know if that's a, a guarantee, but obviously it's, it's getting things started off on the on the right foot. It's a it's a good uh, you know step forward, if you will. But yeah, and I'm with you too. I I, I can't imagine how they could replicate this season next year. Well, Other- if they do, then he doesn't deserve to coach anywhere again. Right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I think look, I I think w- what we keep losing sight of, especially on that show, and I always kind of try to bring it back to that because I talk about it ad nauseum. You know, man, this program isn't broken. The offense is. If you had a basketball team that could not shoot three pointers and was it just couldn't make shots, if you had a basketball team that shot 21, 24 percent from the field, no matter how hard they played, no matter how great a culture you'd have, you wouldn't win anything. You'd go three and 29. You can't win like this. Yeah. You can't win averaging less than 15 points per game. You can't win averaging less than 25 points per game. And he's averaging 14.9. That's insane. It's insanity. Hmm. So that you you just again give me an average offense, and we're not having these discussions. It would be a disappointing year from the from you know because you wouldn't be probably challenging for the playoff, but you'd be five and three or six and two if you just had an average offense. The fact that if you can just fix the offense, and that's a big if, because it's going to take a lot of players and a more and different coaches, and you got to make the right decisions, right? But if you do. 
you're right back to being respectable and maybe better than that. But again, that's a huge if. I don't even know what. I don't even know what they're going to do. Like, what are they going to do? We have no idea. We don't even know who the <laughs> quarterback's going to be. Know, we don't know man. who the receivers are going to be. It's why it feels daunting. Backs. It's why it feels daunting. But I guess at the same time, that's opportunity. There. You well, can, yeah, there you go. That you sound like Norvell now. That's well, opportunity. Well, I mean, but you're right. It is. Well, like to like Iris' point, which you know we talked about on the show yesterday. Like, it, it's going to have to be a hybrid rebuild like you, you can't just simply say all right like we like the guys that we have we're just gonna get all new coaches in here nope. you can't say yep. that you know um you know we hate the players we're just gonna stand pat with coaches and get all bunch of new players you need to go get and, I, and i'm with i'm with jeff like sweeping changes five or more new assistant coaches at pl- least yes at least. Yeah. new new offensive coordinator and listen I, I don't think he's gonna let go of the play sheet and whatever if he's got a better offensive line and a couple NFL caliber receivers to throw to. I'm sure he'll he'll call plays just fine. I, I still don't know if you're going to get NFL caliber receivers, but if you get a, yeah. an offensive line coach who can bring a guard and a tackle with him that are that want to come play in Tallahassee and play in front of a great uh, brand new spanking stadium and, and a great fan base that loves the hell out of them, yeah, I mean that that's that's part of it. That that's part of the solution there. I just I, I hope that he can find that right offensive coordinator line coach that can kind of meld with what Mike's vision is. And I hope we get back to like, let's get back to all the jet sweep motion, man. Let's get to all these weird stack bunch formations where guys were getting it just, there's like the creativity and, and all the multiplicity that he ran last year with Jordan. It's, just, it's been gone. So I, that's why I'm with you. It's like, I'd love to see an all new approach to calling plays and, and a new system, but I remember like what he did last year, and I liked it. I'm like, this stuff's tricky. Like you, you see Shaheem, or rather Jaheem coming across the formation. He literally could catch the ball like on a basket pass yeah. in, in motion and, and get you eight, nine yards on a jet sweep. He could also end up setting the edge for you to bust off a run by Trey Benson, and he could go vertical. I mean, there's there were so many different ways he could kind of pivot off of you know what he wanted to call, and he, he had it when he had the, the level of talent. I just hope that, you know, the portal is going to be fruitful and you'll be able to hold off enough of, of these other teams that are just as well healed now and, and ready to go when it comes to offering guys NIL packages that you were so ahead of the curve. I think the, like, but when you look at, and I, I agree with all that, um, when you look at what's going to be out in the portal, um, just, you know, I'm not going to try to name names. I'm not going to kill anybody that's, I don't want to. That goes to besmirch. your point, though, right? You talk about 30 new players and he's, he's almost talking about, I don't know how many guys I'm going to add, but it seems like there's probably a decent number of guys that are going to be told this probably isn't the place for you any longer. Yeah, and I don't care how many stars they had coming in. There, no. there are guys that uh, can go make plays in college football at the receiver position. This is, you know, as bad as the QB play has been, the receiver play has been uh, preposterous. Uh, there's, there's just nothing re- – in the, I, we think we like the young guys, but that's just something we think because they look better than the older guys. But I don't know if any of these guys are going to be big time. I think there's a chance. I like what I see from them, but I, who, who could know? Go get somebody that has caught touchdowns in an actual college football game. Multiple ones if you can. Like multiple guy, multiple touchdowns, multiple guys, multiple touchdowns. That have, I, I, I don't care if they're the leading receiver on a Division II team. Go get me dudes that make plays and have a history of making plays and that can run the right routes. And catch balls like because you, it's hard to judge any of this. I, I I just what what I worry about with his offense because you know like he said they've had problems dropping the pass they've had they've been dropping passes they've had problems blocking they've had problems running they've had problems reading it as a court. yeah every problem uh, we get it, it this when, when you can't just luck into being this bad on offense you have to work at it you have to work at it and be awful at everything and they are um, but I wonder in my concern. If I was Michael Alford, well, no, if I'm me, I don't have to be Michael Alford. I don't have to be his boss, quote unquote. Um, can his offense work without Jordan Travis at quarterback? It, you know, it, and it's not like they always use Jordan's athleticism, but Jordan clearly was a is a bright guy. He is smart. He reads defense as well. He sees things quickly, and he made the right decision almost all the time. But not every quarterback is Jordan Travis. So if you don't have a Jordan Travis, can this offense even be functional and not – because, again, I, I don't have to I, – I haven't even done this uh, exercise yet in uh, in a month. But they've won like three games. They're like 3-18 and 18 in games where Jordan Travis wasn't the quarterback in 27-10 and 10 when he was. Like 3-18, and 18, Aslan. Hmm. And if you look at the numbers, they, they average like – I don't know, man. I, I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 points 
uh, maybe, maybe less than that now. Like it, it, the the disparity is enormous, and it's a, it's not a small sample size anymore. And it's multiple quarterbacks. You're talking about James Blackman, Mackenzie Milton, Tate Rodemaker, Brock Glenn, Chubba Purdy, uh, Luke Romanhawk, like DJ Uyungle. Like there's seven guys I just named. And only Jordan Travis has been able to crack the code. So if it's that hard to crack, McKenzie Milton couldn't do it. I know he was on one leg, but McKenzie Milton couldn't do it, and he played a million games of college football. DJ Uyungle couldn't do it. He played a million games of college football. If they can't do it, maybe it's the offense. So that's what I'm concerned about is if he keeps the offense, stays calling plays, unless Jordan Travis gets an extra year of eligibility, um, I wonder that it's not going to look – much the same. But, the, yes, they need sweeping changes across the board. Um, I have no ill will towards any of the coaches on the offensive side of the ball. I I would not be upset, and I don't think anybody listening to this would be upset, if, the, if it was a complete reset, just like Matt Campbell did at Iowa State. Just a complete reset. No hard feelings. We did great here, but this is the worst offense in the country, and we have to make changes everywhere. None of y'all did a good job including me. I'm being Norvell now. Mm. Um, but I'm not firing myself. We've got to bring in something else. So thanks for everything you did. Good luck. You'll land on your feet. Mm. If you need a reference, I'll give you one. Mm. We refer you to the Corner Pocket Bar and mm. Grill if you want a tasty yeah. meal or a nice diversion after your long work day. You can always go by during your work day. Go grab lunch. It's always great. On Tuesday, yesterday, it was tacos all day. Wednesday, it's that cheesesteak sandwich, chicken or steak. Um, and then tomorrow night's bingo night. You can win cash, multiple opportunities to win cash at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Come on out Friday, live meet and greet Jeff Cameron and Corey. I shouldn't say and Corey. I feel like uh, it's, I almost gave you second billing, which I shouldn't. Corey Clark. You did. I always get, I get third billing on headlines. <laughs> I'm almost like also starring. Like it's Jeff and Ira <laughs> and then introducing Corey Clark. Yeah, it's like yeah, also yeah, uh, starring or uh, introducing Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio, like in right. the Growing Pains intro. It's like this guy. Who's this guy? Um, so yeah, five o'clock live happy hour for about an hour, but you know, Corey, he loves that place. He'll be lingering yeah. around a little bit yep. longer, but if it's after six o'clock at that point, we ask, don't make a lot of eye contact, if any, and ca- try to keep the pleasantries within 30 to 45 seconds and keep it moving. Yeah. Unless you're going to tell me how awesome I am, yeah. then you can sit there all day. You mm-hmm. can sit there all day and regale me with how much you like, but yeah. And also corner pocket, good place to go. Um, after the Knowles big dub on Saturday Woo! night. Woo. You're going to get out of that stadium, I'm guessing, around 7. Mm. You could maybe have a beer in the parking lot and be like, you know what, I'm hungry. And there's some games on. I think there's probably good games on uh, Saturday night. Um, I'm a, I want to go watch some games and eat some wings. Well, you know where to go. CP. That's right, everybody. 2475 Appalachia Parkway. Corey, what, what, what will make this show, every show in the Florida State sphere, better is that if – Something can happen in these next four games where one of these quarterbacks does hope. something. Yep. Give you some hope. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. But then I, I wonder about this. I saw this from a corporate national desk that Michigan offered a competitive NIL package on par with what LSU has presented to number one quarterback recruit Bryce Underwood. This is according to our Pete Nakos. Okay. Uh, the NIL package is expected to be valued between five, uh, valued above rather, above five million American dollars over three to four years. So this is a guy that hasn't done anything at all, yep. Yep. Uh, nothing. So if Brock does great, beats North Carolina, beats the Gators, keeps you in the game against Notre Dame, go ahead and swap out Brock's name for Luke Cromanhawk in that example, everybody as well. It's it's I'm not picking sides by any means. Um, what, what's that going to command? And then how's that? I, I guess that's a good problem to have. We, we're not going to worry about that in terms of how that's going to affect our, our salary cap, if you will. It just, it, that's another thing that makes you feel so like nervous about the future is that you have to take these really crazy swings at quarterbacks when you're not fully, um, you know, uh, you haven't developed somebody and not a lot of people have listened. Miami didn't develop a quarterback. They had to throw the, the, the kitchen sink at Cam Ward. Um, what what would a quarterback that's actually won some games that you've recruited from day one? He's been in your program for two years if it's Brock, a, a year if it's Luke Croman Hawk. Like how much that? How much would that command? Would you think? And is that a, a a good problem, bad problem? Is it a problem at all? I wouldn't even venture to guess. I literally have no idea. Um, I I would say that I can't imagine the bids for either one of those would be incre- would be you know outrageous right now. I don't think you're going to be having to match you know Bryce Underwood type deals um but yeah it would be 
you know, I think there's something about a hometown discount. Like, I, I do think it's crazy we're talking in these terms, but that stuff does happen. Not with Freddie Freeman, <laughs> but with other people, they give hometown discounts, and they, the team that drafted them, they'll they'll stay with for a little less money. I think that would probably still happen. Um, he also knows the system, unless they're bringing in a new system. Um, I, you know, I think more than anything, you've got to prove to who either. And that's assuming one of these guys even plays well. That would be – yeah, that's certainly not a guarantee because there hasn't been a quarterback that played well in a, in a good while here, um, I mean, this season. Yeah. But if it, if it does happen, let's just say that Croman Hawk comes in, plays really well against uh, North Carolina, leads you to somehow, miracles you to three touchdowns. You win the game. Uh, you lose to Notre Dame, but it's competitive. He, he uh, you know, he makes a good account of himself. And then maybe, yeah, you win the next two or you win one of the next two. You finish with three or four wins. He had a hand in two of them and looked pretty good doing it. You know, I think if I'm Luke Croman Hawk's dad and I've proven that I can play at this level and maybe be a real player, like I, I could be the truth for a couple of years here in college, I would like some assurances that I'm going to have better people to throw the ball to. I'm going to have blo- I'm going to have linemen that can block for me. That, to me, would be more important than an extra couple hundred thousand dollars. Because if you're a if you're Luke Croman Hawk, and again, he's played three years of football, uh, three years of quarterback, I should say. And all of a sudden, you feel like you're you have a chance to be an All ACC caliber quarterback next year. And again, this is a huge if. It's a huge leap in logic because the guy's played 50 snaps. But if he plays well over these last four weeks, or if Brock Glenn, like Aslan said, change the names. Um, you 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 want to you want to get drafted high. You want to go play in the league for a decade. You need more than just an extra hundred thousand dollars when you're 21 years old. You want to be making an extra 10 million dollars when you're 30 years old. And that can all be, like, if you get broken in half because you don't have a good lineman or you don't get drafted high because you put up terrible numbers because you don't have anybody that can go catch your passes, then that changes the whole outlook of your life and career. So that, to me, is the more, uh, like, don't don't try to entice a quarterback with just money. Entice them with weapons. Like, mm-hmm. we all know, especially in hindsight here in late October, Cam Ward made the right decision. He has an offense that fits him, and he has weapons. He also has a running game. Florida State wouldn't have given him any of that. Like, the offense would have been better because Cam Ward is a kind of a transcendent type of quarterback, and he could average – you probably could average 25 a game with him. He's that good. But you weren't going to win anything of note, and he wouldn't be the he wouldn't be talked about as the top 10 pick in the draft. Like, last year, what was he going to be, Aslan, the fifth, fifth rounder? At best, probably. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And then now they're talking about us being the first quarterback taken, him or Shadour. Um, so you, and Shadour has weapons. So go get – if you think it's one of these two quarterbacks, fine. They got four day, games to prove it, four more games to prove it. If you need to go get a quarterback in the portal because you don't like these two or these two don't want to stay, whatever the case is, you're not going to get anybody of, of consequence or substance if you don't prove to them you have some real weapons. And so that, I think, money helps, obviously. But when it comes to that position in particular, especially guys that have NFL dreams or think they have NFL futures, get them, get them somebody to throw to and somebody that can block for them. Mm-hmm. That's very, very enticing. Yeah, I just – they got that. You know, that was the thing. I I think that kind of tied us over. And you know, to Iris' point as well. And I think maybe you try even mention it. Like, why did anybody let the Miami game affect their outlook on the, this season and the future? Like, you knew you were going to lose. It played out exactly how we thought it would. Well, maybe not as bad as we thought it was. Yeah, it was seventeen seven. Yeah, it was seventeen seven in the third quarter. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I just you know, you just. I know Luke led a touchdown drive, and so did Brock, but Brock's was, you know, in, in what we like to call garbage time in the business. But then Luke's was only because of a crazy QB speed. Just something that you'll never yeah. could replicate if you tried yeah. 100 times over. So it's, you know, so you went through another game where you really didn't get anything from the quarterback position. But Nothing now, was like, decided, right? Yeah, I don't think. Exactly. Yeah. But listen, Carolina is going to provide the opportunity, I think. I mean, that's not a great defense by any stretch. Notre Dame's going to be tricky, but, you know, you might have some level of athleticism that can give them some problems. And then I don't, I don't know how we'll judge Charleston Southern and obviously the Gator game. So there, there's still opportunities there. And when that, when that solves itself, because listen, someone's either going to take control of that vacancy, that vacuum, or neither of them do. And then that probably also affects what you're going to look for in an assistant coach. Maybe, you know, the yeah. offensive line coach isn't nearly the priority. You want to get a quarterback coach. I can bring somebody with him. Uh, that can run your system or his system, and then you, you kind of go from there. Yeah. One thing I wanted to, to double back on that, that Iris said, and 
I, he almost, you didn't say tongue in cheek. I don't think, um, and I, I really wish I brought this up in the first segment because we were trying to move past uh, prognosticating like Mike Norvell's future. But the the silver lining, and you were joking about this as well, about how bad this is, is that if, if it was a seven and five season, and I just want to bring this up for the people that might not listen to headlines. I'm sure there's a, a huge amount of overlap, but maybe some of you don't. You should. Yeah, um, you're idiots. But don't, but no don't, offense. don't no leave offense this show, though. Don't, yeah. don't, don't stop clicking on this show. But I, I, I don't have a family to feed, but maybe someday. Mm. If they went seven, how's and that going? By the way, we still locked and loaded, feeling good about things. Yeah, yeah. So um, she'll be coming over here this weekend. So oh, okay. I might, might try to get her to come out to the tailgate. We'll see how it goes. Okay, all right. Uh, Stephanie would be very excited. You, you know, have to warn her about Stephanie, though. I've, I've, you know, she's, she got an idea. She got an idea okay. of her, her enthusiasm about life and, and meeting <laughs> okay, new good. friends and stuff. Right, that's good. Uh, she but could the, be overwhelming. It's funny I, when I think about those two. I think about the the Chris Rock skit about like you know you get married and you, your wife puts you in another room with another guy. And like you both like baseball. Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, like, talk about baseball. You yeah. like baseball, right? Baseball, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, baseball. It's like a play date. Play yeah. date with husbands. Yeah, I feel like if we get those two in a room, I'm just going to be like, so what's your favorite Taylor Swift era? Oh, Steph- well, then, and then yes, just walk away. Fine. And yeah. they'll just walk away and they'll that's hit perfect, it off. Aslan. That's perfect. It'll be that's great. All you need. It'll be great. But back to the the point that I was making, and this is like a this is good for the people that want that sort of clarity that I, that I want uh, sooner than later. Again, I'm not saying fire Mike Norvell. I just I don't know if seven wins next year guarantees you twelve wins in 26. Correct. But, no, it absolutely doesn't. Yeah. Just like one win this season doesn't guarantee two wins next season. It right. could be you know. Well no, you're well right. Said. We one thing we've learned from Mike Norvell is you can't <laughs> count on keeping a trajectory going one way or the other. Expect the unexpected. I like yeah. it. Mike's a loose cannon after all. I thought he was a, on the straight and narrow. But the fact is, if, if you would have gone seven and five this year, you probably could tell yourself, all right, let's just, let's let's change one or two position coaches probably, and then let's see what we can do, and, 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 and let's get after it in 25. And then in 25, if that doesn't work out, then it's like, okay, yeah, we'll do a full reset and then, you know, we'll know exactly what we have yep. with me and you'll know what you have with me and what this program is. Yep. We've skipped that step. That step was absolutely skipped. And I, and I and I don't think – I mean, I, it sounds like I'm being sarcastic. I'm not. Like, if you're going to have a bad season, have one like this. Like, the season was lost in the middle of September already. If you have a historically bad season, although it's painful now, it's an embarrassment now, it does expedite things exponentially, hmm. right? You, you can't lie yes. to yourself. In, in in for for the biggest reason, I hope Norvell. You know, we we all have egos. Uh, I, I assume the ten million dollar head coaches that win a lot of games have more ego than others. But he can't lie to himself. He this is not just one small thing or this or that. It is an overwhelming, all encompassing problem with that side of the ball, and he can't lie to himself and say and think otherwise. So I think, again, you know, we lived a lost decade where Florida State was pretty close. To win in ten games, some of those years, a couple unlucky breaks, a, a mutual possession of a fumble, some weird calls in there, and you and you lose some, you lost a lot of close games, and you're like, man, there, you know, if the ball bounces a certain way, we're ten and two this year. Well, no, man, you're seven and six. And Mike Norvell can't. If he had a seven and five season, he could be like, well, yeah, Lee, if we if we get off the field against Georgia Tech, that's a win, and if if uh, you know, if, if we don't throw the pick against Boston College, that's a win. And if we don't turn it over four times, you know, we, he could lie to himself. Mm. He can't lie to himself when you have the worst offense in the country. Mm. And so that I do think that is a, a you know a, a glass half full way to look at it. But there won't be just one. There can't be just a change here or there. It is sweeping. It has to be. So it it doesn't delay the inevitable of tra- the trajectory. You're 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 hoping. You're bouncing off the bottom right now, and you're about to shoot back up like a basketball. Like you've dribbled it hard off the floor as hard as you can to see how high it can go, as opposed to like squatting down with the ball real slow mm. and just kissing it off the ground and then bringing it back up real slow. No, you've taken it over your head as high as you can and slammed it down with both hands. So the, the, you're at least that's what you're hoping. But that's how hard you've hit the bottom. That there is no, there is no way to just slightly kiss the ground and make a couple of changes. Uh, so I do think that could be a benefit. Like if you're going to have a crappy season anyway, you know, go all out, man. Make it memorable. Am I right, Aslan? Somebody, I think, in the comment section was like, "I wish, I wish Cal would have beat us." Just so if we're going to do this, let's just get the the full donut. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, 
Yeah. You know, like, I don't know. At least yeah. we had one night of joy. Yeah, that was fun. And it's because I went back and listened to that post game press conference, and you know, Mike. Mike thought something was happening maybe there. You know, he was like, ah, you know, we needed this. And we needed to win it in this sort of fashion. And yeah, um, they just didn't work out. That was the way. next game SMU? I think so. Right. So their worst game was the one after the win. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, what are you going to do? Hey, football fans, when you arrive in Tallahassee for the November 2nd game against North Carolina, plan for a pit stop as the Whataburger Touchdown Tour comes to Florida State University. Power up your game day menu and stop by the Whataburger food truck during your tailgate. Get ready to watch the Knolls by securing an easy win before kickoff with a hot, fresh Whataburger. That's cool, but they're going to win on the field too, Whataburger. We don't need your pity, but we'll take your hot, fresh hamburgers. And no matter who comes out on top, again, it's going to be the Knolls Whataburger. When you take your squad to Whataburger, you know you're going to feel like a winner because you're going to get your food made your way fresh and hot every time, every hour, every day of the week. So see you at the game before Florida State and Carolina and see you at Whataburger. Food truck location information coming soon. Last segment, Wake Up War Champ, presented by Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com, promo code WarChamp BOGO, WarChamp B-O-G-O. Adam Fuller tipped his cap to Corey on Monday. It was good to see you again. Mike mm. didn't do that, but Mike's, you know, Mike's busy and stuff. What was it like to be out at practice on Tuesday, Corey? What uh, what did you see? What did you observe? Uh, Ja'Kai Douglas, just again, you know, I know it's been a bad season. Uh, that goes without saying, but Ja'Kai's still out there making plays. And, you know, if that ball is going down the field 20 yards and you're watching it on TV, just say out loud, like, I hope that's going to Ja'Kai. Just like mm. to say it over and over, speak it into existence because that's that's your best bet for a big play. Uh, and he had one or two, I think, on Tuesday. Jabril Rawls had a really big day, too, as well. So yeah. Yeah. Um, those were my my standouts. And Brock Glenn uh, in period three flashing some athleticism. So those, those are my big uh, observations. Yeah, Brock had uh, – uh, I, I didn't see it, but I wrote about it because I was told by you and Ira that he had like a 40-yard run that would have been probably a touchdown, mm-hmm. but they whistled him dead. Um, and then, yeah, Jabril Rawls had a pick. He also had a – in one-on-ones, he was really good. He had like two or three PBUs. Um, and he's probably, I don't know, man, your fifth best corner, your fourth. I, I don't know. He, he, But he's good. He, he has a chance to be good. It's good to see him competing out there. Um, but, yeah, I thought that uh, – uh, yeah, it had been a minute since I'd been out there. I thought all the quarterbacks looked fine, nothing special. The guy that – a, a, a guy that I just I've been I've been harping on him really since August and he's yet to do anything although he finally got in the game a little bit against Miami, uh, B J Gibson. Hmm. Um, he yeah. had a, a long touchdown on what in one on ones. I don't I think he he got behind a I I don't know I'm gonna call him scout team because he was wearing black but I don't know if he was a walk on or not. But then in seven on seven, he made consecutive like thirty yard catches from both quarterbacks. And then what I thought was really cool, man, um, and he, he also was open on the very next play for what would have been like a 50-yard touchdown, but Brock didn't see him. And he, he screamed like, ah, like because he wanted the ball <laughs> yeah. when he saw that he took off and ran with it. Um, but another good route where he was wide open. And, again, he's a freshman. He was playing on the scout team for a good portion of the first half of the year. And I don't know if he's he's probably not going to make an impact over these, this next month, but he's going to get some valuable playing time. And he might be a guy you build around. And the reason I bring that up, and these are small things, probably in the grand scheme of life, they don't matter much. But there was a play where Trevor Jackson, it was 11 on 11, and Trevor Jackson threw a ball to Elijah Moore, who made a really nice catch near the sideline. For, for I, think, I think I measured it out at 26 yards. Really good catch against a good corner, like a real cornerback. It was a good play, good throw, really nice play by the receiver to make that catch. And, the way, and B.J. Gibson was on the other side of the field, so it happened opposite me. He's, he's kind of in front of me watching the play after the ball is thrown. And he, like, raises both hands up as if he's rocky. Mm. And they've just, they've just completed a touchdown to win the game. He was so excited for his fellow freshman. Mm. And maybe that's not a big deal. But I don't know, man. I've been around athletics enough. I is in that position can it gets a bad rap. Well, it's probably a well deserved rap for being very uh, self centered and egocentric. The wide receiver position, man. I think that I think that says something about that kid that he was so excited for a fellow freshman to make a play on a Tuesday practice, 
and it's it's a guy that he will be competing with for balls th- theoretically for the next two years, two or three years. Like he's going to want passes too. They're going to be on the field together. They might be competing at the same position. For him to be that excited about a fellow freshman, I don't know, man. Just seems like a. It seems like that's the kind of people you want to build your program around. Plus, he makes catches. Everyone, mm. you're not going to go get just the best kids in the world that run five sevens. You you need guys that are athletes that make plays. He is that. At least he's doing it in practice. But that kind of mindset, I don't know, man. It just, he he kind of reminds me like uh, on the de- the offensive side of like a Justin Cryer, mm-hmm. like guys that I think those personalities, as long as they continue to play well and make plays, you can build around. That's leadership. That that's just that's that's a natural type of thing that I think you can build around. But you need a lot more of it, and you need guys that make plays more than anything. I mean, it, it's, did I say too much no. about a twenty-six yard pass? In the, I mean, on a Tuesday. I know we're, we're you know copium as the kids call it or whatever, but it, it just it boggles the mind that this team gets along so well and seemingly is is still straining every day in practice, and they're this is the result they have yeah. to show for it. It's crazy. It, I it's do like crazy. though that the the young guys, the freshman class. Um, they really seem to have a bond. At least those receivers do. Hmm. Um, maybe that. Uh, means good things down the road. Maybe it means they're all here next year because they like being around each other and they're going to turn it around together. That's what they're selling themselves. Let wait till we get our shot. Watch what we do. That is something that can happen. It, same thing with the quarterbacks. Like wait till we get our. Wait till we're a year older. You better beat us now. Wait till we're a year older and they get people in front of me that can actually block. You don't want to see what we're going to do, everyone. Mm. Maybe that's the mindset they have. But yeah, they they do. They're just not. It's not an unlikable team in the sense that they're hard to root for as human beings. Yeah, they're not unlikable people. but Yes, it's an unlikable team because they're awful and they do dumb stuff. <laughs> but it's not an unlikable team in the in the people that make up the team. No, no. And I don't know. That's probably – that's just, uh, uh, you know, Loser, semantics. Yeah, it's loser's but, uh, mentality right now. But, hey, that's that's where we're at right now, everybody, sadly. But maybe something so, to build on. Yeah. I mean, oh, was, and also, Mastromano had a couple bombs ah, for I mean, punts. Golly, but what are you going to yeah. do? What else is new? Yeah. There was a moment after that period three drive where uh, Brock put his arm around Tony and, and they were walking, Tony Tokars, they were walking off the field as they were getting ready to kick the field goal to kind of end that that sequence. He has arm around Tokars and he, he's like excitedly, like, you know, like a puppy, like just going so excited, like bouncing off the walls, like telling, you know, motioning to Tokars, like what he saw and understanding, oh, that's what you wanted me to see. And he was super excited. Then he, you know, he, he turns around and starts walking off the field. And then Luke's right there to congratulate him. Like Luke is genuinely smiling, like Cheshire Cat, ear to ear, like so happy because of the the big play that Brock had in that period. Like smacks Brock on the helmet. Brock smacks him on the helmet. Brock puts his arm around Luke, and like they're walking off the field and talking about like wh- everything that Brock saw in that sequence to help Luke out later in practice. I mean, there's. I mean, it, and these are the things why it makes you frustrated that people that, that listen to, to the interviews that, that Mike does after practice or in the press conference on Monday where like he's saying the same things. It's because I mean, they're coaching these kids just as hard as they did last year, yeah. and, and they're, they're not maybe getting the, the level of execution. They're certainly not getting the level of execution because you do see Mike frustrated in ways that you never really see him at practice, but he knows that he's getting pretty much everything he can out of most of these guys. And what else can you really do when you're a coach other than wait for the season to end and get some other players that are a little bit better than these ones and some coaches that are a little bit better than the ones you have on. But there's, I mean, there's just a level of like brotherhood. It's part of the whole climb acronym that they, they do have and, and has to make you feel good because if they can just get players that know how to execute, you feel like there's enough culture built into that even if they might not be the most gung-ho guys, that they probably will fall in line enough to not be distractions and, and be productive players and help this team get back to where we uh, hope they can get to sooner than later, Corey. Amen, brother. Amen. I think I taught you into it. Yeah. You got hope. There we go. Uh, you hope, hope is a wonderful – I can't remember. Dangerous that. thing. Hope's a it's dangerous a dangerous thing, thing yeah, yeah, but hope's all you got uh, sometimes, and that's – hey, well, it's all we I've can bank some, on is hope. I've got so much. Again, I don't, think, I don't, know, how, I don't know how probable it is. I'm not, I'm not in the probable uh, column right now. But Don't uh, you think it's – but you would have never thought that this season could happen. No way. Not in a million so years. It, all of this is unprecedented. So it's like nobody's ever gone from 13 wins to two wins. That doesn't happen. So the, the point being, like, who could foresee any – who can who could even dare make a prediction of what it's going to look like? Because in 2021, none of us would have ever predicted two years later they'd be 13-0. and 0. Yeah. Or after that Clemson loss that they were about to rip off 19 straight wins. Like, none of this is predictable. 
So it seems foolhardy to try to make predictions about anything. Not uh, Georgia will be good next year. Well, I can tell you have, that. You know, I think we'll, that, that, but you know, that's what we have a show for, though. Man. No, no, I'm saying, but like to say that one way, and this isn't a shot at you. It's just a shot at. It's not a shot. Period. It's just saying we can have opinions, and they can be informed opinions. But they're still just opinions. We there is no way to know what is what is about to unfold here. No way. Like this no. is unprecedented, uncharted waters. Uh, th- he could he could put together a worse team next year somehow. I mean, I they could average nine points a game. Um, we, we have no idea because of the landscape and because of his track record, which, you know, he doesn't run uh, around the oval. He'll run around the oval once and then he'll cut across the grass. He'll cut across the infield and then he'll start running backwards the other way. He doesn't have a track record. He's not running around a track. This is impossible. What were we going through, Aslan? Thirteen and zero, two and ten. Yeah, I mean that's crazy that we're so. But th- there is hope. Mm. The guy, the, the, the guy that got you thirteen wins is still going to be here. But the guy that got you two wins and the worst <laughs> offense of all time is still going to be here too. So I get the uh, trepidation. That's well, we, why we all get to see what happens together. We it's know the this. duality of man that we like it to is. talk about on this show, Aslan. <laughs> We do know this, though. They're going to have double their win total in the month of September next year uh, as as they had this season. They've, Unless they've Kent State totally hits the portal them. really hard and flips yeah. it, and they yeah. make an incredible flip. Uh, Kent State is the team, uh, if you guys haven't been paying attention, they're, the, they're one of the teams along with Houston that is in the running for the worst offense in the country with Florida State. Uh, that's on the schedule next year, and Texas A&M Commerce is on the schedule next year. So you have to feel like – you got two dubs in going September. into next year. Yeah, so and they, read the rest of the team. Read, read the rest of the games, Aslan. So we know this. So they, they got Bama week zero, yep. I guess, August 30th, or is that week one? I think that's week one. Week so you're 0-1. Okay. But we'll go ahead and say that. I'm a, and you, Bama, might, they're losing their quarterback. They might be horrible. Yeah. But anyway, 0-1. Next week, Texas A&M, Commerce. 1-1. One one. Yep. 1-1. Yeah. One one. Yeah, not, not, not Mike Elko's team. No, no. No. Yeah. Um, Week after that, not sure they don't have that date filled, but then we'll say Kent State for that one. Well, September twentieth is Kent State. Oh, okay, all right, okay, all right. So two and one. Yeah, in September, and then Florida State's got Miami, Pitt, Virginia Tech, and Wake at home from the ACC slate. So again, Miami, Pitt, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest. Like Wake Forest, Virginia Tech. Uh, oh, you know, six win teams. Yeah. So again, you could lose to all these teams, but I feel like. You can beat all of those teams. As we sit here in October, knowing that Miami's going to lose half their roster, um, including the quarterback, and I assume Pitt is uh, – you know, Pitt might be about to take off. Who knows? But uh, He'll be yeah. around if, unless he gets plucked away. Holstein's but, but, got plenty of uh, – And they'll be good. They're, that's a, they're, he's a good coach, and that offense is going to be – apparently it's going to be good. Uh, maybe the OC goes somewhere else. He gets plucked away. Maybe you take him. Mm. And then Pitt's bad because they don't have the offensive coordinator because you just took him. Yeah. Um, but either way, so you feel like two and two is doable there yeah. as we sit here in October. So now you're four and three on the home schedule after the home schedule. And then your away games are Clemson, NC Loss. State, <laughs> Stanford, and Virginia. So again, Stanford and Virginia, absolutely winnable. And none of these, like that, are any of those teams going to be ranked, Aslan, when you play them? Although- Alabama, Clemson. Yeah. Those are the only guarantees, right? Yeah, because Miami, who knows? Uh, they'll be preseason ranked high, but they might have but a couple. Not when you play them, they might not be. Yeah. So, again, you look at that schedule. Not that this was, uh, you know, the Oktoberfest from 81 where you had to play all those five, but this schedule was hard. It's a hard schedule. There are good teams on this schedule. And we don't know because, I, again, I always say this all the time. It's not even Halloween of the year before. So, who knows? Virginia might be awesome next year. Th- th- stuff like that happens all the time. But – as you sit here and look at that schedule, it's not all that daunting. We're not asking Mike Norvell to give us a product that is going to go 12-0 and and be as good as Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State. But when you listen to that schedule, folks, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to give me a team that can win eight of those games. I That's know, all. man, but what do we think about Boston College with a first-year coach? And oh, Memphis I know, but I, I, I'm Tech telling you, but – you, you don't feel like that's an overwhelming schedule. You feel like there's a path if you just don't have a completely incompetent offense. That, that, is, a se- that is a season, even if you don't make huge strides, that is a season that gets you to bowl eligibility. 
it might be a season that gets you to a flipping national championship, Aslan. Hmm. And we're going to play this on repeat yeah. after they win in Pasadena That's next right. uh, or January of 20, what would that be, 2026? Yeah. Yikes, man, we're getting old. It's getting up there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so who knows? But that schedule is not all that daunting. I'd go ahead and cancel the Alabama game and yeah. see if Texas A&M Commerce wants to play twice. <laughs> nice. Uh, live show, 6 o'clock. You want to hang out, Corey? Let's do it. All right, live show, 6 p.m., uh, that'll be your Thursday podcast. Get involved on the YouTube. Again, the uh, the comment section. We'll also do a mailbag on Thursday for your Friday program. Uh, so be on the lookout for that thread over on the Tribal Council. Jeff Cameron Show, 1 to 4 o'clock, 93.3 FM, as well as War Chant TV. Practice later this morning. We'll be out there. Footage, interviews. Check it all out. Warchant.com, Warchant TV. He's Corey I'm Aslan. Thanks for listening to Wake Up Warchant, presented by Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com. Promo code Warchant, BOGO. Buy one, get one free.